Today I am clearing a trail on an old ski trail that I use each year to cut through the woods to make it out to a snowmobile trail for cross-country skiing. Lately there's been a lot of deer around this area and I ran into quite a few today. I had just scared away a whole bunch of deer more than I could count just before I started taping this. One deer remained up by this old piece of farm equipment and watched me and I was holding on to the camera with one hand and my ski poles in the other hand trying to maintain my balance and it was a little bit difficult because the conditions are very slippery and I wasn't really doing a very good job keeping things in focus so I apologize for that but uh, the deer stayed right there and Sarah's running all over the place to the left of this scene and she didn't see the deer and the deer just kind of stood there and watched us both for a little bit and I was really surprised that it stayed right there for the length of time that I was taping and just kind of was curious at the strange person in the field I guess that was looking back at it anyway if you want to see more of these videos I hope you'll consider subscribing to this channel and even possibly there he goes and even possibly supporting my channel to help me make more of these videos Give me a thumbs up, comment below, enjoy the video. Out here on my trip today, I'm on a major deer trail. Sarah, stay back here please. I have Sarah tied to my ski pole so she won't, won't run off. Hopefully I can grab her before she chases a deer. But this is a major deer trail that runs through the woods. We're in a major deer yard here in Maine. You can see that it kind of winds through the woods off to infinity. Maine is full of deer yards or deer wintering areas as they're known in Maine. And Maine has a GIS website where you can go online and see a lot of these designated areas where the deer overwinter in the state of Maine. This is a wintering area that I'm in now that isn't designated but on the trip here this morning I saw probably 10 deer or pro that I could count many more that I they were in a group I couldn't count. It's in a, all you can smell, if you had smell-o-vision, all you can smell is deer poop. All you can see is deer poop. And this trail is, it may look dirty, but it's not. It's all ground in deer scat. It's a major trail. Their main highway through the woods. I'm also on an old abandoned snowmobile trail that I use each winter to cut across through the woods. The main reason they don't use it anymore is it goes through a swampy area and just down out of sight there it's open water all year year long. It never freezes over. I was here uh, a week ago and it was 
five degrees out and the water was flowing. I'll probably show that to you in a little bit when we get down there. Today my major objective is to clear all this area out so I can get through easier when we get some real snow. Right now this is all crust. I brought my skis to get through the open fields a little easier, but right now I'm, it's easier to walk. I just cleared this area out so I can get through. I showed you in some pictures just before coming through this area. And I noticed my settings are not on HD, so we'll change that now. We'll have better pictures in just a minute. There, now we're in HD. Maybe you can see a little better here, a little more clearer. I was noticing on this hemlock tree, the woodpeckers have been busy. Probably a pileated woodpecker. We have a few of those. They're hard to spot around here. You can mostly hear them. You rarely see them except in flight. There's Sarah up the trail. Here's the trail again. The deer trail, the deer highway, their main thoroughfare through the backwoods here in Exeter, Maine. Whoops, now all you hunters know where to go. Believe me, I don't mind. As a vegetable grower, I see this as a threat to see something like this. It took a lot of deer, and it takes a lot of deer to maintain a trail like this. And I fear for my vegetable crop this season because we're only about a mile and a half from my house. Whoops, now you know where this deer yard is. It's within a mile and a half of my house, and if you've looked on my, my uh, channel and you've clicked around, you'll notice that there's some links that take you right to my Facebook page. And on my Facebook page, I have my address and my phone number. Please call me and I'll take you right there this coming fall, during see, or at least point you in this direction. It's not posted land either, so you're more than welcome to come hunt here. People do. Not many people this year. I didn't hear many gunshots, so I think that's why one reason why there's so many deer in this area. Another reason is north of here, about a mile, there was some heavy forest timber cutting and that may have pushed the deer down this way. As, as you can see, this wood's pretty mature. I'm in generally a hemlock stand right now, and it's not a primary wood that they like to cut, and it hasn't been touched in a while. It's pretty thick. Can't see more than a quarter mile in any direction. Out that way is a cornfield. So, on to more clearing, and I'll catch up with you in a little bit. On the unknown trail. Well, I barely moved down the trail, and this is why this part of the trail is no longer a snowmobile trail. This is the main part of the trail. Whoops. And besides being overgrown, as you can see, there is a lot of open water. Now, before the snow came, I walked down through here. And you could walk right down through here, not even get your feet wet. I came down in some old cruddy boots and that had holes all through them, never even got my feet wet. And the ground was slightly frozen, but it was above freezing and nothing was running. I think the ground must be a little warm here and the snow, this must just be mostly from snow melt. Sarah, come back here. Sarah, come back here. This is an interesting cedar. Oops. This is an interesting cedar tree. That's a cedar growing up like a like a maple. Growing tall. 
This is the start of a cedar swamp through here. Maybe another reason why things stay warmer in this area. Because it's swampy. So I'm going to clear out a little bit here so I can get through. I mostly stay to the left of this open area. Because I can't ski through it. But anyway, this is why the I figured they don't continue this as a snowmobile trail anymore. Yeah, I made it to the end of the old trail. And we had to cut about a dozen trees. And they were not alive trees. They were all dead trees that were blocking the trail. Mostly pretty rotten, so I didn't extend too much effort. Sarah helped. We haven't seen any deer for quite a while, so I took her off the the ski pole so she's free to roam around a little bit. But here's another reason why the trail's discontinued. If you look closely you can see the old snowmobile bridge. I remember going across this about 15 years ago. It was a little better then. But after 15 years that's what it looks like. Not much left. The main trail is now straight ahead, about a hundred feet that way. And there's a, you can't really see it, but 
See some little dark objects in the field beyond up there. Those are cows. Believe it or not, there's cow pasture up there. I don't think you can see them from here. One of the little rewards when you're skiing. Hopefully we get some snow and this trail is a little better. That's my only real option to cross right there. With skis anyway. I'm probably this this is a little more of a permanent stream, it's always flowing. That's kind of pretty.